Welcome to Huff Goes to the Movies. My name is Eric Huffman II. Most people call me Huff and some people know that I love going to the movies. Dry Longzo is a 1998 coming of age film from director Colleen Smith who co-wrote the film with Salim Akil. Yes, that Salim Akil. Uh, and the film centers on Pika, a young college student living in Oakland who is trying to complete a photography project uh, when she meets Toby. And the two begin a pretty awesome friendship and we get to see how they interact with other people in their community of Oakland. Now, Dry Lonzo came out in 1998 and it screened at various film festivals that year. In 1999, Colleen Smith actually won the Someone to Watch Award from the Independent Spirit Awards. But the film since then has kind of been in this weird ether. But thanks to companies like Janus Films and the Criterion Channel, they actually did a 4K restoration of the film, which was overseen by Colleen Smith, and now the film is getting a limited theatrical release through Janus, uh, probably ahead of a streaming release on the Criterion channel. I don't know that for sure, but that would make a lot of sense, given the connections here. And I had never heard of this film until I was reached out to by Cinema Detroit about the fact that they will be showing the film in their theater this weekend. I was blown away. I was like, wow, this is really cool. This sounds like something that I wish we got more of. But now that I've seen the film, I'm blown away. To Colleen Smith, Bravo. Now granted, this is coming like 20 plus years after the fact, but I think that for a film like this, produced under these circumstances, probably on a shoestring budget, this really does harken back to something that I have been saying for a long time. A good storyteller is a good storyteller. And damn it, Colleen Smith is a really good storyteller. I love all the things about this movie. I love the cinematography. I love that despite the fact that we are sometimes dealing with very heavy subject matter, that the movie never looks like that. There is this sort of running, looming threat in the film of a serial killer that's on the loose in Oakland that is specifically targeting young black people, not just men, not just women. And Pika herself is trying to complete a photography project where she is taking pictures of the black men in her community because as she puts it to her teacher, there are extenuating sort of environmental socioeconomic threats that do disproportionately affect their lives. Things like the criminal justice system, things like street violence. And she wants to put something together to make sure that these men will not be forgotten. And it sort of comes together in this beautiful sort of art exhibit that she starts to put together uh, in the film. And some of the shot selections here really do speak to what I believe is Colleen Smith's um, sort of passion for filmmaking. There are these wonderful uses of vibrant colors against the backdrop of settings where we know that Things are not great. I love how the colors pop all through this movie, no matter where we are. And I also like the fact that we get so many different sections of Oakland. So we don't just spend a great deal of time in front of Pika's house or in her bedroom, but we also go to um, different parks and and the, the waterfront and we go to her college campus and we go to her friend's house. And I just like the fact that despite the fact that this movie probably did not have some super high tech camera setup, a la whatever they had on the Matrix that came out basically th at the same time, um, that none of the shots look boring. Everything here, every frame here is interesting. There is a texture to this that really does make you feel like you are there in this setting with these characters. And credit to the actresses who play Pika and Toby. I think that they do a really good job with what they're given here. I also really love the editing choices in this movie. Um, what they choose to do close-ups of, when they choose to pull back some, some of the interesting angles that they get when they have more than one character in a shot. There is a wonderful shot near the end of this movie where we get to see a lot of people just sort of out and about in the community 
and we get to see lots of different people who are doing lots of different things and the camera just lingers on them. It just sort of shows them in their element. And I love that because while there are several characters in this film who make choices that we might judge them for, the film never looks down on them. The film treats them as equals. The film sort of loves them the way that it loves all the other characters. And when it comes to movies about black people specifically, movies that are set in predominantly black communities, I think there's often this tendency for us to be like, oh, they're doing some things they're not supposed to be doing. And then the main character is the lone exception who somehow has like some strong moral compass. But no, I really like the fact that Pika here is presented as a good person who does have flaws. I like the fact that Toby is presented as a good person who has some flaws. And I also love the fact that there is just this sense of we're all in this together. We need each other. You know, if there's no us, then there is no community. And this film weaves that sentiment throughout practically every frame. And it makes you invest in these characters. It makes you invested in this story. I found myself just kind of wanting to hang out with with our two main characters. I mean, I would have followed them to whatever corners of Oakland they wanted to go to. And that to me is a testament of someone who has really done their homework when it comes to developing characters and making sure that they're telling a compelling story. And there's no excuse, right? Like, I don't know what the budget of this film is. I'm going to assume it was relatively low, but there are solid storytelling choices being made here. And yes, this film is more than 20 years old, but even to this day, the storytelling choices remain solid. They remain consistent. It feels like this is all part of one person's vision. It feels like it's all tailored around a theme and it feels like it's actually going somewhere. Like it's actually important. And I just love how much emotion was packed into this film Despite the fact that, you know, this this may seem like a very simple, borderline, trivial sort of premise. Um, I, I just really enjoyed it. And to Colleen Smith, I can't speak for your career as a filmmaker or what your ambitions may be or any of the work that you've been up to s since 1998, but... If this is going to sort of be like a reintroduction of you into Hollywood, into the film industry, then bravo, kudos, congratulations, and I cannot wait to see what you do next. Films like this don't get the support that they need because they're not spectacle pieces. They're not based on IP. This is not setting up some crossover in the next three years. But what this film is, is something sincere, something heartfelt, something beautiful, and something that is timeless. This movie was put out in 1998, which means it was probably shot in 97, but this film is timeless. This theme of wanting to celebrate community, wanting to make sure that people are, tr are seen as human beings, despite the fact that there are other things going on in the world, despite the fact that there are a lot of these existential threats, I just loved it. And as someone who's married to an artist, the fact that so much of this is sort of communicated by uh, Pika's artistic ventures, it really hit home for me. And if you are living near a theater that is going to be showing this film, then you owe it to yourself to support this film. If you're someone that always complains about the lack of black filmmakers and black female filmmakers, Especially, you know, given the way that a lot of them are not given opportunities like everyone else, then I would say to you that if you're living somewhere or living near somewhere that is showing this film, you owe it to yourself to support it. Um, if you don't live near a theater that's going to be showing it, then be on the lookout for when it hits the Criterion channel. See if you can do a digital rental of it, because when we support films like this, inevitably the industry listens and they give us more films like this. And for someone like Colleen Smith, I am wildly interested to see what else she can do from here, where she'll go from here. Um, I just can't wait. And I am so thrilled that I was able to watch this. Honestly, as a someone who loves film, this was an honor. 
Um, I, I really did enjoy it. I don't even need to give it a star rating. You want to know why? Because you need to go see it. That's all I can tell you. You need to go support this film, and you need to do it right now. So to the people at Cinema Detroit who let me know about this 4K restoration and re-release, thank you so much. You know I love you guys. You're like my favorite place to go as far as watching movies, so it means the world to me to Janice Films and the Criterion Channel. Y'all are doing the Lord's work. I cannot wait to see what other black films y'all are trying to sort of bring back. And to Colleen Smith, bravo. Dry Longzo is in limited release now. Uh, if you're not living by it, I assume that it will be available on the Criterion channel or through some digital rental service in the near future. Uh, but that's all that I will say about Dry Longzo for today. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. That always helps. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. That way you can stay up to date on everything that I got going on here. Once again, my name is Eric Huffman II. Most people call me Huff. Stay sweaty, my friends. I will see you at the movies. Peace.